Welcome to High Gluttony. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we're two ladies on an adventure. Listen along every 10 days or so as we cook a dish we like, quest about cannabis education, or chat with someone we respect. You can find more information about this episode at highgluttony.com. Thanks for joining us, gluttoneers. Off we go. Yeah, let's get to it. Hello. Hi, Gretchen. How are you today? Hi, Becca. How are you? Good. I've been rushing around. I forgot an important component of the recipe. I forgot to take the recycling out this morning. I had a super nuts of day at work yesterday, and now I am so ready to just sit down, sip on some alcohol, smoke on a pen, and just relax with you. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. How about you? What's going on? I'm tired of hot weather. That's what I'm tired of. Today it is it is 90 degrees. I'm sort of glad I've adjusted my meal plans for dinner. I was originally going to slow roast a pork belly, but my the pork belly did not defrost and may not be usable, so we're going to wait on that. But I was at Whole Foods this morning. They had a lovely deal on some some thin cut short ribs. So I'm doing a Korean marinated short ribs for dinner where I'm using some of the pickled garlic juice on that. And then I'm going to chop up some of the extra pickled garlic to go with it. So I'm kind of excited that I'm doing something with our pantry power up. That sounds so good. Did I tell you about the pasta I made with a, that's as a, like the sauce base? Oh no. Oh, it was so good. We'll have to talk about that another time, but it was so good. And uh, I'm so proud of myself this morning. I was so efficient because I was like, I have to go to the farmer's market. I need apples for this wonderful thing we're doing today that's going to be really fun. And I managed to go to the farmer's market, go to the grocery store, both Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, because I could never just go to one, of course, (laughs) and made it home by 9 a.m. I was so proud of myself. Getting shit done early. Awesome. And a flu shot. Oh yeah. And a flu shot. Check, 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 check. I feel like a real (laughs) adult today. Anyway. (laughs) What are you sipping on while you're sitting in 90 degree weather? (laughs) So I was originally thinking I was going to make some mold cider today. And then it was just like, no, it's going to be too hot for that. (laughs) So I made not an option. I made a bourbon apple sidecar, a lovely slice of apple in it today. And it is quite tasty from Rachel, Rachel Ray for, uh, that's her recipe, but we'll, we'll let that go for now. Drink it. Yeah. (laughs) It's good. (laughs) It looks fun. It's in a martini glass, which this is the second time you we've had a martini glass drink and I've been like, Oh yeah, I can't do a martini glass. (laughs) I don't know why I keep insisting on doing that, but that's just me. (laughs) So Gretchen has a fun festive fall cocktail and I am just sipping on some bourbon with an ice cube. This is Boo Rye bourbon (gasps) from High West Distillery. This is that one. It has, it looks like a bunny, but it has to be a jackalope because it has these huge antlers. So that's like the front image. And I literally only when I was typing out boo rye, did I get that that's bourbon rye? Like I legit (laughs) was like, this must be like the bunny name. Oh my God. No, I can't believe you didn't realize that before. I thought you'd realize that the last time we talked about it when I think, cause we definitely talked about the fact that it was boo rye and I was yeah. like, Oh, that's cool. Like, cause I realized what that was. <laughs> I know. I remember that I reflected on that conversation. Like, Oh yeah. That's why she said, I said, look, it's boo rye. And you said, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I mean, like, does she get it? <laughs> Is that a rabbit yeah. thing? <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, like a boo, like a bunny boo. I guess that's what it must be. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're both drinking bourbon. We're pretending it's fall. It is kind. It is fall. It's, fall. it's just really hot. It's as October. Fuck everywhere still. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we both now live. You, you're in Las Vegas, so it's hot there, and I'm in Napa, so it's not unusual for it to be this warm at this time of year. I just am feeling very fall-like because we decided to make 
caramel apples for this episode in honor of the fact that it will be almost Halloween by the time this episode comes out. And it's been a long, long time since I've made any caramel apples and I've never made them like this. I've made cheater caramel apples before. (laughs) Have you ever made caramel apples, Becca? I have a memory of making them one time, but I feel like it was really unsuccessful. And Mm -hmm. I kind of am like, did I do that? I feel like I did that, but I don't know. I think I've done it one time, but I think it was a long, long time ago. And I don't really have like a firm memory of it. And I probably didn't make the caramel sauce either. That's what's exciting about today. You and I haven't made caramel together and we haven't really talked about it that much. So I'm excited to do a sauce too. It's a bit more like a candy coating. But we'll get into that later because I will have to talk to you about cooking stages for for sugar. Oh, I think we got a little ahead of ourselves. I don't think we said what we are smoking as part of our relaxing into things. Well, why don't you tell me what what pen you're enjoying today? Okay. I think I've had this one before on here. It's called Blue Dream. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah. It's really pleasant. I think it's a hybrid. It might be an indica. Oh, okay. It's Um, it's a... um, It's... Uh, I think it's a sati. Well, I don't know. I've grown it before. I, I, it's either pretty close to a 50, 50, or it's a slightly sativa leaning. It mm. does tend to have a more uplifting effect. That's why the blue dream. It's like, it's a dreamy kind of heady, like, mm. um, it's definitely a daytime strain. That's, that's how I've seen it classified. Yay. That's right in line one. then. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm having a, the, the end of a joint because I am going back to the no joints for Gretchen while recording rule as a result of listening to our bra limoncello episode and going, Ooh, I was way too high. <laughs> I remember recording like, uh Oh, <laughs> I think we've passed the point now. And here we go. <laughs> I was oh, thinking was about fun. doing the CBD leaning joint again. But I have these fun little ones from a brand called Pure Beauty. And there is, this is a, they're sativa. And this is the one that I sent you that has the little eyes on the filter part of the joint. That's like part of their logo is those little eyes. (laughs) I don't know why Pure Beauty and like these big, weird cartoon eyes, but uh, peep and eyes. I just think it's a really fun part of the the joint. So it's a pre-roll, but I'm smoking it out of a pipe because I have to portion control because I am (laughs) as much of a pot as I am. I'm a lightweight. We like to make it through these episodes relatively unscathed and we're working with caramel today. So I need to be kind of on my game. (laughs) Yeah, I need, we all need it. Yeah. (laughs) We got to be walked through this. I need to actually say words out of my mouth. (laughs) Well, we'll let that first hit kick in because I'm coughing a little bit. I don't know. Have you heard that thing about if you're, when you cough, it like makes the high more intense. Like it somehow forces the THC more into your blood. I don't think that might be, I don't feel like that's true. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Are you, were you like, as I'm saying this out loud, I'm not totally sure. (laughs) This this sounds, this sounds not right. (laughs) I feel like I've heard that or I feel like I've seen people who are watching someone smoke for like the first time or an early time when someone coughs they're like oh good job like oh you did it and that is probably what's in my head about those connections okay back to what we're doing we are shock shock and awe you're all gonna be so (laughs) surprised we are using a recipe from serious eats i'm sorry they have good recipes (laughs) And I'm a big fan of Stella Parks, especially because she introduced us to the whole toasted sugar concept. So, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Someday I'll get on to something else. This is an ADD thing. I stick to something for a while and then I get over it and move on to something else. So eventually I'll move on. So we're just on the serious eats ride until we're off it, whenever that is. I looked at a bunch of different recipes. One of the reasons we're going with this particular one is that it is a slightly softer caramel. And that was appealing to both of us because I don't, I, I hate eating a caramel apple and like the outer side outside is so hard that you can't really even like you eat, end up eating the outside and then the apple. And I hate that. I want to eat it. Like I want it to be a full experience of the caramel and the apple at the same time. I agree. I want it to be smoother. I want it to feel like, I don't know. I was going to say like sensual, but I think that's taking it too far. <laughs> But I want it to be silkier. I don't want it to be 
like the center of a Kit Kat or something, you know, like it needs <laughs> to be. <laughs> well, that would be a very extreme caramel <laughs> apple, but um, <laughs> the good news is, is we are using cream in our caramel sauce, although that did seem to be featured in most recipes that I came across. This one does not use corn syrup, which I did kind, I kind of like. I mean, this one really wasn't that far off of Martha Stewart. They were kind of the same. But oh, wait, I thought we were using Martha Stewart. We're basically using both. I mean. <laughs> oh, I thought she was the, the apples and then the serious seeds was the sauce. They're the same. They're pretty much oh, the same recipe. The same. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know far. too if we were, I didn't know if we were putting Martha Stewart in there too, because she's, you know, cannabis friendly. Well, Ooh, cannabis caramel apples. Why hadn't I not Ooh. thought about that before? Oh boy. The only thing I really liked from Martha Stewart's so was the fact that she was like, put sticks in them versus using popsicle sticks. So the sticks I'm using are actually something I got as a free gift when I ordered hay from this company, uh, rabbit, rabbit Hole Hay. Shout out Rabbit Hole Hay on our <laughs> broadcast. Sponsor bros, sponsor my rabbits. So I have this bag of sticks. And I was like, well, maybe I could use those. And then when I went to the store this morning, I did forget to buy some sort of stick. So I rinsed those off because they were very dirty. <laughs> so I did give them a good clean and then toasted them in the oven, which actually made it smell really delicious in here, kind of spicy. So I'm, I'm taking a lead from Martha and using actual sticks. We'll see how this goes as far as staying in the apple. That is a concern on my end. <laughs> I wonder if it will help because it's not ev- totally even. even. It yeah. might. It did look really cool on her. Like the, she also had the poison apples, which were just caramel apples, but then you pop them into some chopped up nuts and just put some chocolate around the outside. So it looks like a little bit, you know, it's just like a drizzle almost. They uh-huh. were cool looking, but I was like, I don't understand why you're calling these poison apples. These are just yeah. decorated caramel apples. <laughs> so, but Okay. <laughs> Want to help reel me in here, Becca? Because I feel like I might be going wild. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. If we talked through which recipes we're using, it's kind of an overlap of Serious Seeds and Martha Stewart, but it's an overlap of a lot of other recipes too. So these are the baselines. We'll put them up on the website, of course, but then we'll put our versions too. What world level do you think this is? If you've never done it before. Oh, well... If this is your first foray into any sort of candy making, this is probably going to be a bit like of a world level five. If you've never done anything with making candy before, someone like me, this is no big deal. I know the concepts, haven't done it before. This is a world level two. I'm going to say for you, because you're somewhere in between that, Mm -hmm. is a world level three or maybe four. I'd like your input by the end though, to what, where you felt it landed landed so we're gonna say two to five for now (laughs) two to five anywhere from two to five so how many steps are there what are we talking about overview of our process today so we are going to skewer our apples and put them back into the fridge to get cold then we are going to cook the caramel there's a couple of steps involved in that once the caramel is cooked we'll pull it off and let it cool then we'll dip our apples awesome What special equipment will we need today for those steps? Can a candy thermometer is very helpful. I will explain later how you can do this without a thermometer. Not impossible to do without, but you kind of need some knowledge and it definitely makes your life a little bit harder and it's messier. It's a much messier method. (laughs) Not impossible. Got it. So candy thermometer helps if you have it. Uh, You're going to want some sticks or popsicles or, or, uh, popsicle sticks. That's what I meant. <laughs> sticks <laughs> popsicle. I mean, you can eat a popsicle while you're doing it. I don't care. That's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> However you get the stick. That's your choice. <laughs> yeah. Also, this is the big component. I forgot. I don't have sticks. I'm using stainless steel straws. <laughs> well, and you're also going to cut yours and then dip it in the caramel, which is another option. You can always do that too. It make smaller pieces. And you said you were just going to use um, toothpicks. Right. Right. I'm going to do one big one with the straw and then two thicks and slices. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. I'm committed to doing the stick thing, but I almost, I have a lot more apples because I went crazy with the apple buying today. So maybe I'll just do some slices too if I have any caramel left over. I love it. Sounds like a plan. I forgot what we were doing. I was like, 
where are we in the recipe? I don't know what I'm doing right now. I took one hit. <laughs> I know. My goodness. I smoked an entire one of these joints the other day. Maybe it's because you only had like a teeny sandwich and you haven't had enough like food today. I don't know. I'm also getting a bit drunk. So yeah, it could, yeah it's hard to know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we covered steps. We covered recipe. Want to talk about some fun things I learned about apples. So my quick Googles about apples. Are you ready, Gretchen? Okay. Hit me. Okay. Settle in. Apples are grown world. Yes. Get your apple drink. Oh, perfect. Apples are grown worldwide, but they originated in Central Asia. And Mm. there's a wild ancestor of the apple tree we know today called Malus Siaversi. And it's still found there in that region. Oh, I guess we got to go to China. I know. Wouldn't that be cool to see? That would be awesome. Yeah. So they were grown for thousands of years in Asia and Europe, and then were brought to North America by, you know, European colonists. Apples also show up a lot in religious and mythological stories, obviously Eve and the Garden of Eden and the Apple of Temptation and how fucking dare she. (laughs) And then it also shows up in many cultures, including Norse, Greek, and European sort of Christian traditions, like I mentioned. I am a big fan of Hera and have done like a little bit of like investigating and research into this one in particular. And she was gifted an apple tree by Zeus that only grew golden apples. Oh, I know. Pretty cool. And then Athena and Aphrodite have also claimed the apple. So I find that interesting that apples have such a rooted connection to so much of our cultural foundations around the world as opposed to other fruits. I mean, I can think of grapes or a few other things that hold like a lot of that kind of historical presence. But I think it's pretty cool that apples appear in a lot of these origin stories or a lot of these transition stories. And it's kind of cool. I hadn't thought about that, but it's so true. It's... (laughs) It's amazing the things you don't notice. (laughs) I know, right? Until you have to do quick Googles and talk about them to the ether. (laughs) Now we've got a little bit of historical context for the apple. There are 7,500 known cultivars of apples, including, I found some funny names. So one of them is Cockle (laughs) Pippin. One is Cook's Favorite, okay? One is Edel Rother. One is Flame, Jazz, Mm -hmm. Lord Lamborn, Peacemaker, and Zestar. I've not heard of those last two either. That was me responding. (laughs) Cockle Pippin. Never heard of a cockle. I've heard of a Pippin apple, but not a Cockle Pippin. (laughs) I forget which of the other ones I'd heard of. You did get a Jazz and Flame, I think you nodded at. Flame. Mm -hmm. So I have that I got today... I got some red goldens, which I hadn't heard of before. They also had wine sap, but I've had those before. I think they were, they're a little, I, they were like, they have this wonderful, like whiny flavor. And I'm like, it's very bitter to me, Mm -hmm. the flavor of that one. So I was disappointed from the description, but they had some Jonathan and Hawaiian. I did get the Hawaiian and I got also golden delicious. So I got a few different types. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you said you got a few different types. So I was like, well, I guess I'll get a few different types. So I got green, gold, red, delicious, oh. gala or gala, something else that started with a C that I'd never seen before. And I think I told you I want to say Komodo, but I know that's not it because they looked that up and it didn't show up anywhere. It didn't so. exist. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's stop right here because you said the dreaded red delicious thing. I think red delicious apples are the worst kind of apple. <laughs> they're so mealy they're and like to me like they have almost no flavor and I don't know if I've just had like really really shitty ones but they're very bitter and yeah they te- the texture is not good to me so mm-hmm. I would never buy a red delicious <laughs> apple <laughs> well now we know that about Gretchen <laughs> I've had most of this alcoholic beverage. It's about to be pretty fucking honest up in here. So I'm sorry. I was at the store looking at the apples and, you know, came across the red delicious. I was, Mm -hmm. I was like, 
I wonder if Becca knows I hate those apples. Well, I'll have to bring it up on the podcast because yeah. I hate them. I hate <laughs> them. I don't want them to exist. That's how much I hate them. Oh my gosh. Oh, who knew? I didn't know this was coming. Oh my gosh. I thought I'm I'd glad. surprise you. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Wow. I did hesitate on them, but they're so pretty. I love the color of them. So mm-hmm. I grabbed two. I, yeah, I think they're a cosmetic because <laughs> they do look good. I, I know I tried for years <laughs> and now Enjoy I just, it. I just can't, I just like can't even touch them. <laughs> Love golden delicious. Love those. <laughs> Red delicious. <sighs> I just okay. can't. It's okay. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not offended. I'm not a red delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I know. You would be doing this podcast would, together. I, you, I would not know if I'd be alive. <laughs> you would have okay. been dis- discarded a long time ago. <laughs> All right. Back to our quick Googles about apples. Worldwide production of apples in 2018 was 86 million tons with China accounting for nearly half of that. Whoa. Apples are kind of like what we learned about lemons in that you have to kind of use all of it. And it made me think about cannabis and how we talk about how beneficial it is to keep sort of the whole flower intact and not try to separate out your THC from your terpenes. And with apples, it's important to have the peel included when you're talking about all of these sort of nutrition things I'm going to go into next. Just like lemons, we talked about that pulp is really important to get most of the benefits. The apple peel is important to be included. Like a a potato. Like a potato, exactly. It's high in fiber and fiber has been shown to help improve cholesterol levels and reduce your risk of stroke. It helps reduce the risk of diabetes. It helps with stabilizing blood sugar again, because of that fiber, it has flavonoids, which are an antioxidant. So they play a really important role. And then those antioxidants help in particular with fighting cancer and only cranberry is better at fighting certain types of cran- or certain types of cancer than apple. Sorry. Now I'm picturing cranberries fighting can- cranberries and it's cute. <laughs> cranberries fighting cranberries like little dancing little like <laughs> fighting cranberries like I will do this I will fight I got this no I got they this. have a little sword and a little <laughs> yeah. shield that they're holding and they're like jousting at each other sort of yeah little um, cranberry zoros sorry but no that would be cranberry cancer in the scenario <laughs> so <laughs> cranberry cancer <laughs> only cranberry is better at fighting certain types of cancer than apples So literally that sentence that saying in an apple a day keeps the doctor away, an apple a day or more can help reduce the risk of breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, and colorectal cancer. Those are my fun facts. My quick Googles about apples. And then I had a like little like awareness slash pissed off moment when I was doing this that I wanted to share real quick, which is that. As I've been looking into these fruits we're using or vegetables we're using or whatever it is and trying to discover more about their benefits, I often see the inclusion of, oh, it helps with weight loss. And it's really pissing me off because I'm sick of taking these like really cool, beautiful things that exist in nature and do all these things for us and turning them into, oh, you should have it because it helps you lose weight. Not like, It's really great for you for all these other reasons. And I'm just like so sick of everybody being like, you have to be a certain weight. And it just made me mad because I was like, can we not just enjoy the apples? Can we please just enjoy the apple? I mean, we can. We don't have to. We're not going to bring any of that bullshit in here. No, we're not at all. That's why I haven't been bringing it up because I think it's stupid. But I also have been noticing that it's been included in all of these articles when I'm talking, when I'm looking at lemons and looking at herbs and looking at this stuff, it's like, oh, it's good for weight loss. And I'm like, no, it's so cute. 
That's it. I just was noticing that today because it had come up with lemons. It had come up with something else. And I was like, and it's on the fucking Apple page too. Like, get out of here with this weight loss shit. What do we still need to do before we head into the kitchen? What we're going to do next is I'm going to talk everybody through the recipe ingredients. And then Gretchen is going to talk us through the steps at a closer level. And then we're going to head into our kitchens, make our sauce and keep going (laughs) with the process. We are using eight to 12 apples each. I will probably only do three or four. Gretchen is going to do the full 12. We are using four ounces of water, nine ounces of sugar, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and nine ounces of heavy cream. Gretchen, are you using granulated caramel sugar? I am not. I'm using regular sugar because I felt to do it justice, I shouldn't cheat. (laughs) Double caramel. So I'm using regular sugar. Perfect. Okay. Talk us through our steps. What are we going to do when we head into the kitchen? So first we're, we're going to get our apples out of the fridge or mine are in the fridge. Yours are still on the counter, right? Cause I, no, I put them all in the fridge. Oh, you did. I just, okay. put, I just put them in fine either way. Although this recipe does say you want to dip them while they're cold. So you want to at least get them in the fridge while you're making the caramel. So 30 to 30 or ish minutes. And then we're going to start our caramel after we get those back in the fridge or in the fridge for the first time. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to read this again because I really just want to make fun of the, the wording. In a three-quart stainless steel saucier, combine your water, sugar, and salt over medium heat. Then we're going to stir it with a fork because they don't want us to use a whisk. They want us to use a fork. Why don't don't we use a whisk? There's no reason I'm going to use a whisk. Maybe, (laughs) maybe. Oh, here's a reason I can think of why they may not be using a whisk. If your whisk is not clean, it could introduce something into the caramel sauce that that will start the crystallization process. That's one possible reason why. So, so far we've got a three quart stainless steel saucier, which is a saucepan, right? Correct. Okay. And in that's going to go our water, sugar, and salt. And then we'll start stirring with a fork or a whisk. (laughs) And I see we have another visitor. This is EJ. No, No, this is Kenzie. Kenzie. Yeah. Yeah. EJ doesn't do tricks. Kenzie, Gretchen's cat does this thing where she comes up and gets back on her back two legs and rises up and plays like patty cake with Gretchen. And they ha- Gretchen has to like stop what she's doing and do the high fives back and forth and then give her a treat. Yeah, I don't so have Gretchen, to, but- I was like, so Gretchen's definitely in control of the house. <laughs> totally, totally in control here. I have not trained my cat to tap me on the face when she wants a treat. I haven't done that at all. So our, we're stirring our water, sugar, salt with our fork. And then what are we doing? We are simmering it without stirring after that. So we're only stirring until it is dissolved. Then we're going to make it come to a boil. Sorry, make it come. And then we're going to simmer it until it starts to caramelize. And they're recommending a honey gold color. Okay. So real light caramel color. As soon as you see that nice light caramel color, you are going to add the cream and the mixture will throw a fit. <laughs> Volcano. Ex- exact wording from the recipe is the mixture will sputter, but it's definitely an aggressive thing. You do not want to have your hands anywhere near it because getting molten sugar on your skin Hurts like a motherfucker. Okay. So just make sure. So how do you add the cream then without your hands anywhere near it? Pour it from up high? Yeah. What? Okay. Ugh, danger zone. It's I should very... have read through this recipe closer. <laughs> I've read it to you twice already. So you didn't say this part about holding it up high from the air and pouring it. I said the-, the part about the mixture will sputter. I guess so. Oof, oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. I maybe didn't convey the, I w- I hadn't had enough alcohol to be really dramatic about it, Becca. You should have gotten me drunk on the first two read <laughs> All right, so you've got your sputtering caramel cream situation. Okay, here we go. And you're going to reduce the heat once the sputtering subsides. You are going to stir because it will it it comes and goes very quickly. So it's not like a long-term danger, maybe 30 to 
45 seconds, maybe. I don't know. I've never okay. timed it. Then you want, we're going to stir that creamy caramel situation until it comes to 250 degrees on a digital th- thermometer. And this says it's going to take about seven minutes. Okay. Can I give a quick recap? So I make sure I understand what, what our steps are up to this point. Okay. We've yes. boiled. Okay. We've boiled our sugar, water, salt. We've brought it back down to a lower temperature and simmered it for a while. And then we add the cream Mm -hmm. in a very dangerous and sounds reckless to me way, but I'm go, I'm ready. I'll do it first. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. We add the cream (sighs) and then bring the heat back down, lower lower the heat again and stir it for a long time consistently until it gets to 250. You said, Mm -hmm. okay. Then we're going to take it out of the pan into a heat resistant bowl. I'm going to use Pyrex. A Pyrex um, measuring cup. Okay. And we're going to cool that down to 212 degrees. So this is where that thermometer thing comes in real handy. As soon as it's cooled down to the 212, we're going to dip our cold apples into the caramel. It does say to let the excess drip off before transferring to a parchment lined cutting board. And then we're letting them stand at room temperature for about 10 minutes. And then they are ready to serve. Ta-da! We have then talked through a recipe. We have shared steps in quite a lot of detail. (laughs) And I feel prepared. I feel scared. (laughs) I feel ready. I'm here for you. I'm here for you, Becca. Don't be scared. I know. It's the only reason I could do this. And actually, I'm so glad I didn't really pay attention to how what this that step meant of pouring the heavy cream from up high because I think I would have been really anxious about it all morning so I'm so glad I'm just jumping in here we go (laughs) you're gonna be fine you're gonna be totally fine and you don't even have to dump it from that far away especially if you're quick so you just have to either be quick or pour it from far away okay (laughs) (laughs) you've got two options (laughs) okay let's go do this I'm like prepping my area. I put a little like towel down. I cleared out all of my utensils and olive jars, olive oil jars and stuff around the stovetop. Wow. I'm like preparing for battle. (laughs) All right. I'm going to put my sticks in because that's my next step. Okay. Your sticks are going in. My straws are going in. Seems like it'll work. I like it. Did you go, do you go like right in the middle? Yes. With the stem. Yeah. Where the stem comes out. Okay. It's on. Woo! Your, yeah, uh, yours was probably a lot easier because you have a hole in the center. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Because it's more resistance kind of from the, there. yeah. Although my stems didn't come out as tidily as I was kind of hoping they would. Tidily? Um, Not yeah, tightly? No, they, they okay. didn't come out nice. Like I had nice. to okay. trim them because they would break off several inches above the apple. Or I not see. several inches. <laughs> Just more like millimeters. Okay. <laughs> I do like how cute these look on these sticks, though. I need to yeah, the sticks are adorable. I am envious. I was like, maybe I'll run outside and try to find a stick. And I was like, in the dirt? In the <laughs> rocks? Where? 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 <laughs> you, you don't have a tree in your yard? Uh, no. <laughs> I have three big stones, a lot of little rocks, and some pavement. <laughs> But I bought some new plants today. And for a second, I was like, could I rip off? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So once my apple is skewered, it goes back in the refrigerator. Correct? Yes. Okay. Correct. I'm, I'm getting ready to start my caramel over here. Where are you at? You're pretty, pretty close here, right? You just got to okay. fit your stuff in the fridge. Okay. Okay. So I feel like in this case, me going a little bit ahead of you is not a bad thing. So okay. if you're just a couple, you know, a 30 seconds to a minute behind me, that's going to be almost beneficial to you. Great. Oh no. What just happened? I put the, the cream in there. Shit. Oh, so you got to take the cream out. I can't. The sugar was in there. Shiitake. You got to start. Yeah, over. I got to start over. Hold okay. <laughs> okay, good. Whew. I'll keep drinking. Gives me more time to be prepared. Have a, have a beverage while I kick myself. <laughs> I'll just use a different pan. What am I going to do with that? Sugar and cream? 
Yeah. I mean, there's lots of things. So. You should make cinnamon rolls and make a little. Oh, make a frosty with it. Yeah. I finally bought a pie dish today. A pie dish? Nice. It, we were at Williamstrom getting the candy, candy thermometer. Yeah. James was like, do you want to get a pie dish? And I was like, no, I mean, I know why I like needed it the other day, but like, we don't make pies really. And he was like, I know, but that's like the fourth or fifth time that we've been like, let's make this. Oh, we don't have a pie dish. Let's use something else. And he, and I was like, okay, fine. Like, yeah, let's buy it. I don't know why the fuck we have, we're not buying it. Like, what am I doing holding out on this? So anyway, it had a recipe in it that I wanted to share with you. Oh, okay. And I think you've made this before. An olive oil cake with fruit? Oh, yeah. Um, maybe not with fruit, but I've definitely made olive oil cake before when we worked at that place that we worked at. That's right. You made it for the tour sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, that I always wanted to make like a really good olive oil cake. So I don't necessarily want to do this one, but I want to put it on our future radar. List. Hit me. Hit me with the olive oil. Oh, I thought you were going to read me the recipe. <laughs> oh, I was. <laughs> That's funny. Since I have to measure shit right now, I was like, well, why not? Right. This is perfect. You're right. Olive oil cake with fresh fruit from William Sonoma. One cup extra virgin olive oil, plus more for greasing. Two cups all-purpose flour, sifted. One cup granulated sugar. If you are Becca or Gretchen, granulated caramel sugar. Oh my God, that would be so good. (laughs) Right? One cup firmly packed brown sugar. Light brown sugar, excuse me, one cup milk. They don't specify what type of milk. I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I prefer more specificity. One teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon kosher salt, three eggs, grated zest of one lemon, one half cup fresh blackberries, plus more for garnish, one half cup fresh raspberries, plus more for garnish, one half cup fresh blueberries, plus more for garnish. Confectionery sugar for dusting. <laughs> Are we garnishing this cake? Are we garnishing it? Is it going to be garnished? I, I can't well, tell. Well, it is a little tough to read through the lines, but I think it's a safe bet that we are garnishing this cake. And that has been a reading of a recipe. <laughs> Here we are. Where's your yeah. cream bin? Has it been in the refrigerator still or is it out at this point? Or I guess it's well, in the pan. One of them. <laughs> now it's in the fucking Where? pan. The other one was in the fridge the whole time, but I did have the first batch <laughs> sitting on the counter. So I, was... I pulled I pulled my cream out when we were about to start. Should I put it back in or just leave it out? No, I'd leave it out. I'm okay. I'm about, I just measured the sugar. So I'm putting the sugar in the pan. Okay. I realized I didn't actually need, I measured the cream first. Now I feel like an idiot because I didn't need to do that. <laughs> I forgot to measure out some water. I'm going to do that real quick. So excuse my sounds. So I've just put the sugar and the water into my pan. I'm getting my fork out. No, I'm getting a whisk. (laughs) (laughs) Checking how clean. What heat here again? High heat? Medium heat? Yeah, it can be heat. High heat. Okay. It's just until it's dissolved. So, okay. I'm going to turn mine off a power boil because that's that's way too hot. (laughs) (laughs) Should I start or keep waiting? You can start. I know you and I have talked about it, but I don't know if we've told our gluttoneers that I have a gas stove now. I'm trying to figure that out now. I think it did come up in the pot pie episode because that was the ah. first time with it. Ah, that's so, right. Okay. We'll keep Thank announcing you. it until they don't forget. <laughs> sure, I, for, I remember that I've said it. Okay, so mine pretty well dissolved. I mean, you don't have to be like really intense about it. Flame's probably a little too high. Because I'm getting some caramelization on the edge of my pan where I do not want it right now. I forgot to tell you, I did try making popcorn in this pan with disastrous results. What happened? I think it doesn't heat evenly. So like at parts of the popcorn were burning. And so it might end up being a really terrible pan for this as well. Oh, we'll find out if I'm going to be trying to make my other caramel work over here (laughs) okay (laughs) this will be an adventure i have been whisking over here and dissolving it's going to boil it's starting to boil right around the edges okay so this is where i'm at see i'm got a good boil going on i've got my heat sort of more medium high just because i want to get this going we're kind of waiting for the water to evaporate And that's when 
the sugar will actually start to cook. I see. But I don't want, again, since I know this pan is sort of problematic, I don't want it up too high. The sure. thing that I'm a little concerned about right now is that I've got some crystallized sugar on the sides of the pan mm. that might be a problem later. So I see. So what I'm going to actually do is this is a trick. I'm going to get a little water and I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to just dissolve that, that, those sugars off right now, because I'm still at a stage where I, this can't, won't be a problem. Because if they stay on the side of the pan, they can seed the crystal formation. Mm. And if they do that, you could end up with a grainy caramel. I see. So right now I'm just going to brush the sides off so that there's no crystals. It's still in like a transition phase. So you can make changes. (laughs) You can make changes. It hasn't, (laughs) our course isn't set yet. (laughs) And just to double check, this is the time when we're not touching it. We're just letting it kind of get boiling right boil. right okay. we're letting it boil so I've just wiped down the sides of my pan with some water <laughs> okay good trick it's mostly salvageable in it's, many cases yes so as I said before we're making a candy and so just caramelizing sugar is different from making a candy what we're going to do here is we're going to take our sugar to a caramel stage and then we're going to cool it down and add fat and moisture by adding our cream. We're going to do a second cook on it to bring it up to a a certain temperature to achieve the right texture for our candy. Do you have any questions? (laughs) It goes up, it comes down, it goes back. It goes goes back up. up. It goes down, you add some stuff, there's an explosion, it goes back up, goes back down. Right. Yes. It's like a grandparent's version of how they had to get to school. (laughs) I had to go uphill both ways, twice. <laughs> no, actually, my grandmother's stories about going to school were usually about the fat pony that they rode to school and how the fat pony would start out their ride. And this is the thing that horses do, is that when you tack them up and put their saddles on, they have that part called the girth that goes around their chest that holds the saddle on. So what they could do is like, in, like hold suck their breath in basically real big you put the girth on basically a little looser than the the horse's actual circumference so you always need to check it before you get on but this pony was so skilled in holding its breath that they would get part way to school before the saddle would start to lean and go over (laughs) wow and how far was it I don't know she never said but Ah, not the point not the point it was more about the pony (laughs) <laughs> the pony what? like trying to just fuck with them every day <laughs> oh my gosh what an interesting gram- grandma going to school story <laughs> my grandma was an interesting person I thought you'd like that one I love that anyway not the point <laughs> we love was, talking we do love talking we like talking to each other I don't like talking to many other people but fair totally yeah. fair I'm just showing you what mine looks like can you see that it just is glowing. <laughs> is that any better? No, that looks more glowing. Wow, no, that's like a, a total angel. Oh, I can kind of see it. Yeah, okay. So I think mine might be boiling a slightly bit more than you. It's like a little bit foamier. Should I turn it down? Maybe just a smidge. A so smidge? that you could okay. like, because low and slow is fine here. You're just, it's just how fast you want to get there. So the lower the temperature the easier it's going to like the more time you give yourself on getting to that point. So if you want to turn it down, that's fine. You know, you kind of, sometimes you have to just feel it out as far as heat goes. Like, can I, do I feel comfortable at this high of a heat? Sure. Okay. I can stay at this high of a heat and then go quickly. But if you're attention challenged like me, sometimes going a little lower, slower, a little lower, good idea. As long as it's still kind of boiling a little, right? Correct. Okay. Got it. So your comfort level of, of rolling to simmering gently boil. Right. Okay. Well, this, while, while we're kind of waiting for our caramel to continue to release moisture, this feels like a good time to note that we had some listener feedback that we would like to address. Specifically, Becca wants to address it because she's the one who can actually explain it. In our production meeting this week, Gretchen shared our listener feedback from her brother. 
Ben, who we have mentioned before. And apparently, Ben takes issue with our use of glutton ears instead of gluttons. Totally fair. Glutton ear is not a word that existed before this podcast. <laughs> that makes sense. However, we strategically felt like gluttons did not cover all the basis of what we're doing here, which is an adventure every time. So in the adventuring spirit, in the pioneering spirit, in the even Disney imagineering spirit, we are building a cult and we are making our own words. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not building a cult. But we felt like gluttonier was a fun word that covered adventuring and gluttons didn't cut it. So there you go, Ben. Full explanation. Please continue with the feedback. We do love it. I mean, we also invented another word, which is repisode, which is recipe episode. Mm -hmm. We are just, we do, we do want to invent our own language and start our cult. Yes. We joke, not joking. High gluttony compound is a cult. Ooh, that looks pretty. I can see some color on your pan. Yeah. And I really want to swirl it, but this recipe says not to do, to, to not move it. So I'm, I'm sticking with that. I am going to turn my heat down just slightly because I don't want it to like gallop away at the edges. And maybe part of the problem here is the size of the burner I'm using in comparison to the size of the pan, because you're getting a little bit of uneven heating around the edges. So I'm definitely at the right color, almost the right color here. I kind of have to look at the gradient of color and I'm getting a little darker around the edges where it's lighter in the center. And so I'm pro- I'm about to go in with my cream. Okay, watch. Let's see. Ah! Oh, oh, interesting. Oh, I lowered the heat enough where it didn't splatter too much. All right. Okay. So Ooh, that, that, that was not that know. bad. Okay. Yeah. It usually goes wild. <laughs> I couldn't even deliver on that for you. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Yay. Oh, that was best case scenario, actually. So you turned yep. your heat back up. You added your I cream did, when I it did. was lowered yeah. and then you turned your heat back up to what? Because my, my, my sugar had kind of solidified a little bit. So I turned it okay. up just to help melt it. I'm going to put it at um, more of a low side of medium. I'm going to wait until the sugar falls off my whisk. Ooh, mine might be burning a little on the edge. Shoot. Okay. I think it's okay. I had to swirl it. Okay. Okay. I think I should add my cream. Go ahead. Go for okay. it. Oh, here we go. Oh, turn it down. Turn it down. Mm-hmm. Turn it down. Oh, God. Whoa, right. butter. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, and then bring the heat back up. Yes. Am I so I'm going to bring it up to like, yes, we're going to stir. Oh, it's pretty dark. Well, you, uh, but it doesn't smell burned. Okay. Okay. Woo, smells like butter. So this is where it's going to get kind of annoying because we're going to have to cook it to a certain temperature. So we have to cook it to 250. Okay. And at a certain point, so I, my mixture right now with my handy dandy spatula with the thermometer in it. It says it's 115 or 215, 216. It's climbing step pretty steadily, but we're going to 250. So it's going to take a little bit to get there. I'm going to okay. turn my heat down a little bit further because it's very hot and my hand, and that's uh, not pleasant for my hand. Mine's at 140 and rising fast. Okay. That's, that's, that's good. That's where it should okay. be. Okay. I'm at 220. Now I'm okay. down too low. When it gets to 250, what do I do again? We're going to, you're going to pull it off and put it in a heat proof bowl. Okay. Let's talk about candy cooking stages and what we're actually doing here. Yeah, please. I have no idea what's happening. As I mentioned before, towards the beginning of this longer than expected episode. So they, how they originally used to determine how cooked their candy was, was by drizzling a little bit of it into some ice water. So this is how original cooks could tell the consistency of the candy before they were finished so they could make sure that they cooked it enough. And this is why you can do this without a thermometer technically, but it does require a little bit of know-how and it does get messy. (laughs) Right. And it takes a lot of practice, I bet, to get it right without a thermometer. Yes. Having a thermometer is much easier. (laughs) (laughs) So a a digital candy thermometer or deep fry thermometer is going to be a lot better for this sort of thing but otherwise so the different candy stages are referred to as by the following stages so this is by dripping your caram your sugar into ice cold water 
So your, your first stage is thread stage, and that's a boiling point of 215 to 135. So you know that your, te- your syrup has reached at least that temperature. If it turn, if as soon as you turn, drop it into some ice water, it turns into threads. So it just kind of like drips in. Then if you cook it a little bit longer and drop it into the ice cold water again, and it makes a little ball as soon as it hits the water, but you can easily squish that ball. That is called softball stage. (laughs) Oh, I was going to ask you about that. I saw a note on my candy thermometer about softball and I was like, what the fuck is softball doing on the candy thermometer? <laughs> well, wait till we get ha- to hardball because it does have three, defi- three different designations of ball and they are softball, firm ball, and hardball. So softball is you're able to squish it as soon as you pull it out of the water. And that's what was that temperature? 235 degrees to 240. Okay. And this also factors in elevation. So that's why it's a bit of a range. I see. Then you have firm ball, which will squish a little bit, but not fully like flatten. Okay. So bad. one would hope. Okay. So right now my temperature is 230. So I am definitely in the, thr- I'm still in thread stage right now. I see. Hard ball occurs at 240 degrees to 265. So that's dropping it into the ice water and you are, it's basically a, a, it's set, like totally, it it makes a ball, like immediately. Like a little asteroid. Yeah. (laughs) Probably. I also thought malt ball. And I was like, I don't know if everybody knows what that is. Well, you know, (laughs) it's, it, that is, yeah. I'm sure. A boba tea ball? Well, that boba tea would be more like firm ball stage. Hard ball is going to be a little bit firmer than that. I see. All right, so we've done softball. We've, we're at hardball, and the next one is firmball. Mm-hmm. Then you get into soft crack, which is when you've hit the temperature of 270 degrees to 290 degrees. Soft crack. At, so that's when you drop it in. It usually makes a little bit like longer piece than just a ball. And it'll bend and crack eventually, but not necessarily right away. And then your okay. final stage of candy cooking is hard crack. Yeah. So hard, hard crack is when you've reached two, uh, 300 degrees or 310 degrees. So it'll drop into the water. It'll form a little bit longer piece, but it, as soon as you pull it out of the water, it cracks into immediately. Okay. Which is most butterscotches and brittles are hard crack candy. That's their. <gasps> oh. cooking. I can go through the examples too, if you want. Of that what? would be super helpful. Okay, hold on a second. I'm trying to do this while stirring. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this is a, a talk about multiplication. So, so your examples of the different types of candy that you can do. So, thread stage is going to be anything like a syrup or a preserve. That's going to be a thread stage. Okay. Then softball is usually for fondant or fudge. Mm, I love fondant. Three forty right now. My cooking or approximately I keep bouncing between 339 and 340 or sorry Wait, 240. aren't we only supposed to go to 250 yes 250 I'm sorry oh, to say 240 okay. and I'm saying three my I my was bad. so scared I was like oh no is, did Gretchen really go to 300 and what are we gonna do but okay I'm at 226 uh, okay I'm at 241 and so I am in the just above softball stage which is fondant and fudge and then firm ball is caramel candy. So most caramels that you come across are going to be cooked to the same consistency because that's all we're really doing is making a caramel candy to put on the outside of our apples. And hard ball stage is taffy. Mm, okay. Soft. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Hard ball is marshmallows and nougat. <laughs> okay. And soft crack is taffy. So that like slightly stiffer. Sure. Well, it's not tougher, but yeah, stiffer, I guess. Stiffer. Yeah. Oh, I'm at 250. I'm done pulling it off the heat. I thought I got a measuring cup out. Oh, I did. I got, I'm actually going to just stir this in the pan for a second to cool it down a little bit before I pour it into the Pyrex. Even though room temperature Pyrex should be able to handle having cut caramel poured into it. Better to be safe. I'm just going to pour real slow. I'm getting, I'm definitely getting getting more color on this. And if I cook, if it overcooks, then I'm going to have a problem when I'm dipping. I got to. 
I actually just got to go. Go for it. Okay, so you're pouring out. Yep, I'm out. I'm on, I'm into my measuring cup. Okay. Getting all this caramelly goodness out of this pan. So my caramel's already down. Now that I've dumped it out, it's already down to 233 and falling. And we need it to be to what again right now? Uh, 212. Okay. Ooh, I'm at 245. 250. There you go. Go, go, okay. go. The outside went hard real fast. Oh, <laughs> Got to move it around a little. And I've, I've ended up with about just about a cup of caramel. Okay. So it comes out a bit. I mean, that shows you how much of, of cream is water. Sure. The mine's still boiling in there. That's not surprising. Okay. All right. Mine's down to 216. So I am going to run out and grab my, my apples. Hey. Okay. Apparently my caramel is actually still at 224. So. Ah, well, <laughs> at least okay. your apple's ready. Yeah. My <laughs> apples are ready. Mine's pretty dark. Is it? Yeah. I think I burnt it a little on the end there of the boiling. I'll put some salt on it. <laughs> it'll be it'll fine. Be fine. <laughs> just your yeah your flavors might be a slightly more bitter but it'll be fine <laughs> that's all right of course now it says 205 and falling no no this is like 220 before god damn yeah it. mine's <laughs> dropping actually i hit 216 and then it went to 212 and i feel like i gotta move now i got yeah now i gotta all right well here we go <laughs> Okay, here we go. Here we go. My my apples are going to be very luxuriously robed. <laughs> I like already down like half of my caramel and I've only dipped two apples. Uh-oh. This one has a lot on it. This one I just did. I'm slicing oh. some right now. I didn't I should have sliced them, but I didn't. Oops, shit. And then the stick came out of my third one. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> yep, cooled down way too quick. So it's not sticking. Mm-mm. I probably would have been better off to just go ahead and dip when it was still a little hot. I see. Instead of waiting for that exact 215. Mm -hmm. Because then it starts to cool quick. Yeah, because now I've just kind of got glumpy, clumpy caramel on the outside of my apple. Oh, no. Look, look. Oh, no. Looks like peanut butter. Yeah. It's on there now. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so I'm going to pop my caramel in the microwave for a few seconds and wait warm it up a little okay nope nope not happening oh no too clumpy Uh, yeah too hard not happening well let's try this again with this other mess i made where i put the cream in the in the sugar too soon i'm just dipping my slices with a fork because i couldn't find a toothpick and it's a mess and it Mm -hmm. looks ridiculous (laughs) this flavor better pull through (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we're not passing our on our aesthetics here today friends and because i kind of have to push it off the fork it's like just kind of ending up in a, a oh. way <laughs> uh this might be one of our more spectacular failures a learning experience we will never do it again no i'm just kidding <laughs> oh i'm doing it right again right now i'm just gonna so what i'm doing now is to show you <laughs> Because I'm not expecting you to stick around for the whole thing. I'm going to make it a caramel with that sugar that I put the cream into already. So this will be a little bit of a... A hell or good experiment. A hell or good experiment. All right, then. Maybe it, it might be a hell or bad experiment. I'm not <laughs> sure. Well, mine are a mess. They look ridiculous. Mine so, are not uh, good. Mine are yeah. not good either. So This has been fun. <laughs> well, I guess we'll leave it here. We'll Fail. let you... <laughs> sort out your next your next batch and uh we'll we'll collect ourselves and yeah you'll see us in the future to report back on on hopefully on these really fucking flavorful caramel apples i've got so much i you know how i said it was gonna make a puddle oh it did Uh it did we got a puddle oh we got a puddle Ooh, Uh that is a luxurious puddle right there i'll show you my slices i just put a piece in my mouth but oh yeah yours is really dark yeah it's pretty toasty. <laughs> it does it taste okay? Hmm. It tastes good with the slices because yeah. they're pretty sweet. And I'm gonna put some salt on it, but it does have a little hint of of burn. So what would you what What's your assessment right now of what the world level is? At least four. I, mm-hmm. That's why I was like, I feel like I should ask you because I think I think it's a four, but I also don't judge it well for somebody that doesn't have any experience i've made a lot of caramel in my life so i'm sure i think four with you and maybe five if i had done it on my own 
Well, I will definitely report back on the the experiment that is just making it with the caram the cream put right in there to start. So okay, all right then. We'll see you in the future, gluttoners. Sorry, Ben. We can't stop, stop. using it. We will not. <laughs> you will make up words until the end of time. <laughs> uh, all right then. See you soon. <laughs> We are very much in the future. We have fast forwarded quite a bit from the caramel candy making, apple covering situation that occurred a couple weeks ago for us. How did your caramel apples turn out, Gretchen? For sure, by the end of all that, I was like, fuck caramel apples. I'm never doing this again. (laughs) Not because they were bad, really. Just because, oh, that's right. I, because I was, I did that extra caramel. So that ended up being a whole thing because that batch actually crystallized on me. So then I had to melt it again and start over again. A big fail, big fail on my part. So then on my second go around, I left caramel, the apples on the counter because they were too cold. So when I dipped them into the caramel, while very tasty, it had way too much caramel on it. The one really successful one, <laughs> which was the very first one I did. I know I made it more complicated by trying to make that second caramel and then changed too many things on the second go around. It's a warm apple and hot sauce and left the sauce a little warmer and tried to dip it. So then they were all covered in a thin layer of caramel and that wasn't working either. No. <laughs> Would you make the caramel again? You just wouldn't do the whole process of apple dipping and stuff? For sure. I will make caramel over and over and over again until the day I die. I love making caramel. <laughs> so that's that. Yes. The, not the, the problem. The whole, that's not the problem. It's the whole dipping the apple, trying to be the right temperature. I also think I need to make more caramel. It's just not enough caramel. I barely could do like four apples with the amount of caramel. Eight to 12 were th- tiny, teeny, tiny apples. How was, <laughs> how was your experience with the caramel apples? As our listeners know, I was glad I didn't know what the full process was before we started. <laughs> I remained glad throughout it. And I think mine did burn just the teeniest bit in one little spot. And I remember thinking to myself before that, maybe this is ready. Maybe this is ready. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh shit, now it's too ready. So very thin line, I very think thin. I would say. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's very easy to just go right over it. Don't worry. I've done it a lot. It's not unusual. <laughs> no, I ended up dipping my one apple into that. It actually came out pretty smoothly, but it looked super, super dark. And I added some sea salt on it. And then it actually ended up being kind of delicious though. That burntness was pretty nice because I, that I used a green apple Mm -hmm. and it was a really nice balance of some of that bitterness. And then the burnt caramel and Mm. the salt, it was kind of fun. I wouldn't go through that whole thing again. I literally just cut up my other apples I knew I was over it too, because I was looking at the pictures the other day of the slices of apples. And these are the most ridiculous, horrendous slices of apples ever. And I was just so done. I was like, fuck this caramel. Fuck. Like, what's the point? And I wasn't even slicing my apples well, but it was great. And then I just loved dipping them in. I didn't even use toothpicks. I just ate it right out of the bowl and it was delicious. So... (laughs) I think that's the ideal solution for what we were trying to do there. Just make caramel <laughs> sauce. Then you can dip whatever Anything you, like you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Popcorn to zucchini. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I would say all in all, if I were making that by myself for the first time, probably a four to five world level difficulty, especially with the apples. If it were no. just the caramel, I think it would have been okay. I would have, I wish I'd had the confidence in myself to pull it sooner. If I have any advice, it's pull it 
earlier rather than later. <laughs> you, yeah, it's a, a, again, <laughs> always easier go one direction than the other. This is one of those times when if it's too light, you can always try and heat it up a little bit more, but you can't go back from burnt. So <laughs> too much in one mm. spot. There was one little corner. Yeah. <laughs> It's like apples, making applesauce or something like that too, where it's like one little bit gets burnt and it makes the whole batch taste like shit. So, <laughs> What would you say all in world level for you? You had said maybe a two. Is that where you land? I'm going to say three just because it was so fucking annoying. And <laughs> the fact that it crystallized to the point where on my second batch, it crystallized. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is a fucking pain in the ass when this happens. And also why you use corn syrup, because you can kind of stave that off a little bit. Ah, hence all the corn syrup and the recipes we ignored. Yeah, (laughs) Mm -hmm. exactly. Man, I love our arrogance in the beginning of these. We got this, we got (laughs) this. And at the end, we're like, now I get it. That makes sense. (laughs) This person has solid advice. Mm-hmm. Maybe they did this a couple times, learned something from it. I don't know. Possible. Likely. So we will share both recipes that we base this ordeal off of, but our notes as well, including this guidance of, holy fuck, please don't do this. And <laughs> you can find that at highgluttony.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram at highgluttony. Thank you for joining us. We are seeing listeners all over. We have popped up in Moscow and Belgium and all over the U.S., coast to coast. We are so excited to be growing and thank you for joining us. Tell a friend, like and subscribe wherever you're listening. And yes, thank you for joining us on our super exciting High Gluttony Adventures. Hooray! Hooray! Off we go! Off we go!